that's okay. Um, so first I wanted to give an overview of where we're at, where we're going. Uh, I forgot when I put the course together that I have combined chapter 8 and chapter 9 into one unit. So today we will do both chapter 8 and 9 on probability. We're going to look at all the types of probability because actually I find when I did it that way, it you, you'll get a deeper learning because you'll see how probability works all at once instead of looking at the basics and then going to the advanced stuff and looking at those separate things. So we're going to do that today. Um, you should have at least one green and one red dye. If you have more, that's fine. But uh, we, I want you to have one of each color because I want you to sort of see what we're going to talk about as far as uh, the concept of probability. Uh, so we'll get into that. But we have an option. And so since you're here today, you guys get to decide for the class. What I'm thinking of is next, so what's today? Today is Monday. We have Wednesday as a work day to go to, to work through any of this, as well as test corrections from the midterm. And you have until, you can keep working on the midterm uh, corrections as long as you want. You can still go back and work on the, any units you didn't finish. However, remember I have made it so that one unit, one chapter will be sort of like extra credit. So I've, I've got it set up where right now it, it drops your lowest homework and quiz score. Okay, so if you didn't do one, it's disappeared. You could say, okay, I don't want to go back and do it. That's fine. If you go back and do it, it'll become extra credit. If you get everything done, it'll be extra credit. Uh, eight and nine are combined in one into one unit now you'll see when you go into the homework uh, so it's worth 30 points each instead of 15 and 15 right so there's one assignment one quiz and it's 30 points because it's covering two chapters of stuff so we'll go over that uh, what I propose is that instead of doing chapter 9 next Monday which we are scheduled to do we move everything up one so we would do chapter 10 which is counting we have Veterans Day holiday so we take that off uh, then we could do chapter 11 and chapter 12 and be done with the, the instructional part of the class a whole week early. And what that allows us is to use that last week to get ready for the final, to finish up anything. If you wanted to do one of the projects, that gives more time for that. Uh, the other option would be to kind of take a bye next week and just allow things to get caught up. Um, but again, we could still do that, but it might be better to put it towards the end so you're either done early or you're um, or, or you have that extra time at the end. Uh, which one of the two? So option A is next week we just kind of move everything up and keep going and get done or get done a week early. Option B, we take a break next week. Option A, option B. A, one vote for A. See couple head nods in the option B okay okay good I don't know if that's a fair way to do it but um, I still remember the trauma from third grade um, I knew we were getting ice cream that day and then the teacher asked do you want it in the morning or after lunch and I hadn't brought my lunch so I wanted it in the morning and I was the only one <laughs> and so it was like and then you know, and she called me out on it. She said, okay, everyone else voted for it. I was the only one saying, I, I need some food. <laughs> but uh, so anyway, okay, so we're in agreement. We'll just kind of keep moving ahead and going with that. Um, okay, let's talk then about, um, as you'll see. So again, you, if you want some more information about the course projects, there's this, this is completely optional. It's 260 points, which is, maybe I'll make it 300, but basically it's, it, it can replace an exam. So it's an alternative credit, not extra credit, but uh, however you want to view it. Because um, someone was asking, well, if I did that, then I wouldn't have to take the final. We kind of like you to take the final, because if you go through the other work, you're going to be good. But uh, anyway, yes, it could replace that. Um, where are we? So we're here in chapter nine. I have some extra videos down here. Uh, these videos for chapter eight and 
for chapter nine are kind of like on specific problems. Um, if we go to the slides for combined chapter eight and nine, the first link, you'll see there is a recording, uh, I think this is from last spring, of when I did eight and nine, otherwise I did it as separate ones, uh, but I found that uh, doing it together worked pretty good. So we're gonna do it together today. Um, and I'll call you out when, when we're ready to take a look at the die. And I apologize for the lights. It's not that I want everyone to go to sleep. That's, it, the lights just won't work. I've tried flipping them on and off. I think it's our, uh, our motion sensor is maybe out because usually that also controls and it's not doing anything. But uh, so we've got this light. This is as much light as I can get. Uh, I'll get the, uh, the facilities folks to come take a look and get it fixed when I get a chance to do that. Okay, so probability. What is probability? When you think of probability, chance. Chance, chance of something happening or not happening, right? Something's gonna, there's a, always that chance. Um, and so we've got, we think of probability, we could do it in terms of percentage. Um, anywhere from a 0% chance of something happening you might look out today, there's not a cloud in the sky, so we might say there's a 0% chance. Of course, from coming from Oregon, you could always be wrong because there not, you know, it looks like there's no chance of rain in the afternoon, things change quickly. Here in Arizona, we get, what, months and months without any rain, so we're probably pretty safe in saying it is a 0% chance. Uh, then there's the other, to the far extreme, a 100% chance of something happening. So if I walked outside and it was raining, I could say there's a 100% chance of rain, right? Because it is raining, right? Um, and then there's all these in-betweens. So probabilities we assign between zero and one. One is 100%, so it's, a, it's the decimal equivalent of 100%. So sometimes we are, um, let me get this. Yes. homework and quiz. One homework and one quiz get dropped. And that's already, the grade book's already updated that, so it's whatever your lowest quiz score is, it's dropped from the grade calculation. Whatever your lowest homework score is, it has been dropped uh, from the calculations. I need this thing to work. Okay. Okay, so yeah, 50% we could also think of as a, a decimal 0 0.5, 50% or one half. So there's all these in-betweens um, that we can do. Uh, the closer the probability of the event is to one or 100%, the more likely it is. Uh, the closer it is to zero, the less likely it is. So we, you know, and there's a type of probability where we call we don't go too much into this mathematically, but subjective probability is what you think is going to happen. And I used to do a video. How many of you seen the movie Dumb and Dumb or Dumber or Dumb and Dumber? Right? Remember that's a, there's that time when he's asking the girl out, and you know he's asking what's my chance, what's my probability, and she says you know it's like you know whatever. I, I, it's a great one anyway. She says like one in a million, and of course he focuses. She's trying to tell him sort of like kindly, it's a 0% chance, buddy, but he sees one in a million, hey, so there's a chance. So he's thinking it's closer to 100% because, you know, he's, he's so cool. Uh, so we have the subjective thing of what we think is gonna happen, sort of that gut feel, and sometimes we're right, you know? Everyone else says, hey, your team has no chance of winning, and they win, so uh, it can happen. So theoretical probability is what you have these dice for. Actually, we're going to do a little bit of theoretical, what we would expect to happen uh, based on sort of, of that. And then there's the other type of probability, which is what we observe to actually happen. So in theoretical probability, the way they design it is with experiments. So somebody sat and rolled a bunch of the dice a bunch of times to see what actually happens after they came up with a a, a conjecture, right? 
The sample space is all the things that can happen. So this is kind of getting, that's why we did the set theory is uh, we sort of look at the set of all things. So when we're talking dice, um, you know, depends on if we're running a, a single dice, we can get a one, two, three, four, five, or six. That's all that can happen. It would be impossible to roll a zero with a die, right? It's impossible to roll a seven. Um, but then we're gonna look at the probability of each of the individual. That would be the set. The event is something of, of what, what is the sample space? What could happen, right? So I could roll a one, two, three, four, or five, or six as my sample. If it fell off the table, maybe I call that a do-over or something. So it's not possible to not roll one of these numbers, right? It's something is going to happen. And then the sum of the theoretical probabilities of everything that could happen has to equal one or 100%. If it only equaled 95%, then we're missing five, there's 5% 5 of something that could happen, you know. So we've got, everything has to add to 100% if we're talking probability. Um, and then the probability is going to tie in what we're going to do in Chapter 10 as well, is simply accounting. Uh, now, if you remember from set theory, this N of E, that means the number of, of ways of doing something. Okay, how many ways could I roll a three with a single die? How many threes are on this cube? There's one. There's one. Um, and so I would say the number of the event of, so maybe the number of rolling a three is equal to one. How many possible outcomes are there with this cube? There's six different things that could happen. So the number in the sample space is equal to six. And so theoretically, we think if, the, if everything's equally likely, I have a one out of six chance of that happening, which is a fraction, one sixth. One divided by six is 0 0.167. And so I could say there is a 16.7% chance of rolling a three. So we'll denote that as the probability of rolling a three, okay? So this is just kind of some notation. The probability of the event rolling a three is one sixth. And that's all probability is. The number of ways of getting something to happen divided by the total sample space, the total things that could happen. Okay. If it's equally likely. Now if I put a weight on this dice on the, on the four, which is the opposite side of the three, so it's heavier on the four, it's gonna be more, more than equally likely to get a three, right? And people do that when they're playing craps, they weight the four and they weight the three, so it's more likely you're gonna get a seven, right? So you can adjust these things, but we're thinking a fair dice has an equally likely chance of rolling up on any of the sides. Have any of you studied or thought about something called chaos theory? Maybe you've looked at, saw the movie Jurassic Park. I think it was the first one. And that uh, one character is talking about, you know, that once, some, once you start rolling these, one of the, si the sides wear down. And so it's not e really equally likely on, a, on that level. Okay. So that gets in there. So a lot of the things that actually happen in our world, we're using this theory to say that it's equally likely. It might be slightly less. We're going to look at something like the probability of getting a female or a male. If you look at what actually happens, more females are born than males. So it's maybe, you know, on a genetic level, maybe it's not a fi exactly 50-50, the, the genes aligning and stuff, because and, that determines whether the child born is a female or male. Okay. But that's all we're doing is we're counting, and then we're making a fraction of what we're counting. But we have to count everything, and we have to count what makes our event. So that's where we've got the, the red and the green die. Okay. Um, so here's an example. One die is rolled once, find the probability. We kind of did this, but uh, the sample space is we can roll a one, two, three, four, five, or six. Uh, the event is uh, the probability of rolling a three is one out of six. And in the homework, a lot of times it wants the probability listed as a fraction. Uh, my preference is going with a percentage 
And so 16.7, you know, you could say that's almost 17%. Okay, but it's rounded and such, so. Um, uh, there's only one way to roll a three and so forth. So how about rolling an even number? Well, rolling an even number, how many even numbers are on the die? Three. Three, so the number of this event of evens is equal to three. So would it make sense that that would be three out of the total of six or a one-half probability? 50-50 if we want to write a 50% chance of rolling an even, a 50% chance of rolling an odd. Um, so that's all it is. That's all probabilities that we're doing is counting and dividing. How many ways of doing the event, how many ways of doing something, and doing the division. So far so good? If you understand that, you understand really all of probability. We're going to throw in a few um, conditions as well of, of what we, but it all comes down to what do we end up counting. The calculation is always the same. Number in the event divided by um, the total. Okay, so there's another type of probability which we call empirical or observed probability. This one, uh, if you're into sports, this is the one that you're using. You know, a player's batting average is their empirical probability. They get up to bat, if they hit, get a hit, all they do is take the number of times they get a hit divided by the number of times they get up to bat. That's your batting average. That's your probability of getting a hit. And as you know, your players, sometimes they have slumps and so they're not batting at their average. Sometimes they get on a streak and they're batting, they're always getting that hit. Um, the World Series is up and running right now, so you gotta think, you know, getting a lot of home runs so there's all sorts of things we can do the, there's pitching they have an earned run average so again they're it's it's empirical probability yes sir you can do that project on batting average you can exactly that's a great way to do it and if you want to tweak things a little you know you can make it you can do the simple how to calculate a batting average but you can also i've had people do comparing like and again this might be a good one babe ruth with otani yeah, yeah, and because they're they're both pitchers, they're both got you know batted a bunch of home runs, but you know you kind of do that, and then you know you might make some adjustments for how the game has changed or something, but that's yeah that's a perfect that's a great way to use mathematics. Um, okay, again, observed number of times that event occurs divided with total number of occurrences. I used my dad used to coach us in baseball myself and three other brothers so we were all going through and we all took turns helping dad by being the statistician of you know watch the game and we never really knew what we were doing we were just told to watch you know how many hits we were doing that but little did we know we learned later oh we're actually doing statistics right we're doing probability because we're keeping track of what happens how many strikeouts all those kind of things in the little game book okay uh, so computing uh, empirical probability, what we need is some observances. In this case, it's a survey um, of people, and they're broken down as male and female, whether they were married, never married, divorced, widowed, or, and so then we've got totals on each of these columns. We're gonna use this again, but it allows us to say, what's the probability of randomly selecting somebody and having them be X, Y, or Z? So if one person is randomly selected from the population described above, find the probability that the person is female. So what do we need to do? Well, the result that we're looking for is the probability of selecting a female. There's no condition on it, so how many females are here? 124. How many total people are in this survey? You add this way or this way, 242. So the probability of getting a female randomly selecting someone would be the number of females, 124, divided by the total number surveyed, 242. And I think I left it in here to do the calculation I did. Um, so that's about a 51% chance. 
and again that's closer to like the birth rate as well that there's actually more more women than males also women live longer so in total there's more women in the world than men because on average they live I don't know what it is seven or eight years more than a male born at the same time make sense just counting identifying what the numbers are dividing simple probability okay. and even we could do the same thing uh, we're going to do some things called prob uh, conditional probability from this table we can do a lot of different types of probability you know what would be the probability of choosing a divorced male there we go 10 well just out of everybody that you what you're doing is some conditional probability but so a divorced male we find well there are 10 divorced males out of this whole group so this is still 10 out of 242 we're going to take a look at something called conditional probability and what you answered is what's the probability of getting a divorced person given that we got a male so that would again we just look up here that would be 10 out of 118 so uh, cool but that's the that's the confusion or the hardest part of probability is is reading the question and and knowing exactly what it's referring to okay and actually when I was doing my master's work, probability was a, like a minor for me because I was going to go into uh, something called actuarial science, which is uh, the probability uh, used in insurance, okay, those type of things. So what's the probability of an event not occurring? So we do this every day. If the weather person says there's a 30% chance of rain, what do you automatically think is going to be the chance of it not raining? Perfect. See, you already y'all got this down. <laughs> we use it every day. So the probability of an event not occurring is simply one minus the probability of that event, or 100 percent. That's why I like the percentages. So if the probability of rain is 30 percent, the probability of not rain would be 100 percent minus that 30 percent or 70 percent or again if we do it as decimals one minus 0 0.3 which gives us 0 0.7 but again that's why i like to work with percentages rather than decimals it's just easier to do the calculations and again these are things you've probably done all your life oh 30 percent chance of it happening means 70 percent chance it's not going to rain I'm not even bringing my umbrella today. Okay. Same thing if you know the probability that it's not going to rain, you know the probability that it's going to rain. So they might have report 70% chance of no rain. Okay, 30% chance of rain. So we do this all the time. But that's when they're, uh, you have to be careful. I want to back up here. If they say there's a 30% chance of rain, does that mean there's a 70% chance of sunshine? No, sunshine is not the same as not raining. It could still be overcast and we have clouds and this is Oregon. It's still, you can't, you know, the sun, you don't see no sunshine, but it didn't rain. Okay. Or, and there's occasions when I've been here in Arizona, sunshine's still out and it's raining. I don't know how that happens. If there's not a cloud in the sky and all of a sudden you got some rain, but uh, those are not the same thing. You roll a six sided die, find the probability that you do not roll a four. So again, we look at our die. How many fours are there? How many? One. 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 Yeah, one if you're on a single die. Um, and so, yeah, the probability of rolling a four is one out of six. Probability of not rolling a four is six out of six, which is one minus one six. There are five six probability of not rolling a four. Okay. We're going to see how this actually becomes, we get just, uh, if we think of this in this terms, uh, it'll be easier to do the calculations. Okay, and then now we're actually getting into chapter 9. Um, these are the just different ways of doing probabilities. So these are or probabilities. 
Uh, so getting a four or a three, maybe that. Uh, so there's two things we, ha there's one thing we have to consider when we roll, uh, when we consider or probabilities. Um, and that's this idea of mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive events. Um, if they are mutually exclusive events, then the probability that A or B will occur is determined by adding their individual probabilities. Um, oh, if they're not mutually exclusive, uh, and then subtracting the probability that A and B occur simultaneously. So, mutually exclusive. Can I roll a three and a four at the same time? No. No, you either roll a three or you roll a four. You can't roll them at the same time. Um, however, there are events like drawing from a deck of cards. I mean, and we don't do a lot of these, but in a deck of cards, the, what do we have? We've got suits, right? Hearts, diamonds, spades, clubs. We have various number cards. We have face cards, king, queen, ace. Uh, we have colors, red or black. And so what's the probability of drawing a black jack? There's some, some overlap there, right? There's two cards, or some cards that are both black and jacks. Uh, so that's the thing that they're not, that type of thing might not be mutually exclusive. So we're going to look at a few examples, and um, we'll see how that works, okay? But thinking back to our sets, uh, when we did a union, A union B, if there was some overlaps, and we, we could do this with a Venn diagram, here is set A, and here is set B. In this intersection part, if we count everything in A and everything in B and add them together, what happens? We've counted the intersection, A intersect B. We end up counting that twice because we counted it with A, we counted it with B, so we counted it twice. And so that's why we have to subtract off that intersection so that we only count it once. Okay, so let's look at an example and I'll show you basically there's two ways we can approach this. Um, either with this formula or just by counting real carefully, okay? So using set notation, the probability of the union, A and B together, A or B actually, is we add the, the number in A, the number in B, but we have to subtract off the intersection part because that gets counted twice if we just do that. So let's look at this one example. How many of you know what a baboon is? Nobody knows what a baboon is? You don't even watch those Wild Kingdom. Yeah, Wild Kingdom was my favorite show when I was a kid. So that's a, not really a monkey, but it's kind of like a monkey, but it's a, you know. Uh, so we got a group of 25 baboons. What baboons like to do generally is they like to groom each other, so we've got 18 of these baboons enjoy grooming their neighbors. 16 enjoy screeching wildly. That's another thing that baboons like to do. 10 of them enjoy doing both. Okay. And then what we want to do is do a probability. If we choose one of the baboons at random, what would be the probability that it enjoys grooming its neighbors or screeching wildly? So that's two different things. So let's we could do this with a Venn diagram. So we'll have this circle represent the baboons that enjoy grooming. We'll call that G. And then we'll do this Venn diagram circle containing the number that like to screech wildly. We'll call that SW. Okay. Do you remember when we were doing the Venn diagrams? We always try to start with the middle piece, which is those that are in both groups. So how many are in both groups? Ten. Ten. So that's here in the middle. And then remember, since that ten is it's both in the, the grooming side and the screeching wildly side, it's in both circles, when we go back to calculate how many 
are in the screech, just the screeching wildly, 16, we do 16 minus this 10. So this comes from chapter seven that we were doing. So there are actually only six over here that only like screeching wildly, 10 here that scre like screeching wildly and grooming, so there's our 16. When we go those who like to groom, we're told there's a total of 18, but that 18 doesn't go in this part of the circle because we've already counted 10. So we take 18 minus 10. There's eight over here. And then remember, there's one more thing we might need to do. Are there any baboons who don't like to do either? Well, we've got 25 baboons here. What do we have? Eight plus six is, 20, is 14 plus 10 is 24 total baboons. We've got 25, so what we know is there's one out here who's sort of a, a loner, doesn't like to groom or squeeze wildly, uh, quiet guy. Um, I think that's me. I'd like to just kind of leave, leave me alone. Let me be myself, okay? So now find the probability that it enjoys grooming its neighbors or screeching wildly, right? We could do this one of two ways. We could just count, well, here's grooming as eight plus 10 plus six, right? Those are all the baboons that like to either groom or screech wildly or do both. 24 out of 25 total. Or we could do it with these numbers up here, that there were 18 that enjoy grooming, there's 16 that enjoy screeching wildly, but we have to, what we've done is you'll see that's way too many, right? That's more than 25. We have to subtract off those in the middle that we counted twice. And what we'll see, 18 plus 16 is actually 30, 34 minus 10 and notice we did minus the 10 we get 34 out of 25 that's more than 100 percent but now we get the 24 out of 25 okay so two ways to do this you can either be careful about how you're counting so that you don't count it twice notice up here that's what I did I counted I was making sure I counted each thing once then I can calculate it, or I can be sloppy in the way I count and just subtract off the intersection, okay? And we'll get the same answer in both cases. Okay, so watch for those. You're gonna get some in the homework that will be or probabilities. Two things can happen, A or B, just watch for something that has that overlap. If there was no overlap, then I can just be sloppy, just add them together and, and I'm gonna be fine because Basically, that's subtracting zero, right? There is no overlap. And again, this is the, the way they, they do it. Uh, add them together, subtract off the overlap, we get our 24 out of 25. However, if you set up a Venn diagram and count carefully, just count each thing once, and then you don't have to worry about the subtraction. Okay. Last. Well, actually, we've got two more things. We've got the and probabilities. So what's the probability of and? And with and, the thing we run into is whether the events are independent or not, are dependent upon each other. So that's what is an independent event. An independent event are, are two different events that when one occurs, it has no effect on the other. Okay. So one example I can give you, we're driving and the, the when you drive, what's the probability of getting in an accident? Now, would you agree with me if it's raining that there's a higher probability of getting in an accident? Roads are slipperier, vision is, war is not as good. So those are not independent events. When it rains, there's a higher likelihood of getting in an accident. It changes the likelihood. But how about getting, driving and getting in an accident and what would be something that wouldn't affect that probability? And it being a holiday. Maybe those don't, now maybe there's less traffic, maybe they do affect each other, maybe they don't.
but we'd have to take a look, okay? So if I roll a die and I get a four, does that change the probability of what's gonna happen when I roll the die again? No, because I pick it up and it resets, right? So those things are independent. So, um, and probabilities with independent events, so they, they don't influence each other, uh, it's a simple calculation. I just multiply the probabilities. So the probability of rolling a four the first time followed by rolling a three the second time, they don't influence each other. Um, I can just take, what happened? So if the probability of rolling a 4 is 1 6, probability of rolling a 3 is also 1 6. I take 1 6 times 1 6. So probability of rolling a 3, then rolling a 4 the second time, since there is no overlap, would be 1 out of 36. Okay. Um, oh, I have my pencil upside down. Okay, that's, okay, so here's an event. We have a roulette wheel. So the, the wheel, you put the ball in. There's 38 numbered slots, um, one through 36, and then they have the zero and the zero, zero. 18 of the slots are black, 18 are red, and there's two green. I believe the, the two zeros are the green ones. Um, the ball can land on any slot with equal probability. What is the probability of red occurring on two consecutive plays? So first of all, what's the probability of getting a red the first time? 18 out of 38, right? Not quite 50-50 because of those two green slots. And then what would be the probability of getting it on the second time? Well, if you got it the first time, does that change the probability of getting it the second time? No, there's still 18 slots out of 38, and so we just multiply that out. Um, they reduce, I don't like doing this because they, they reduced, right? 18 out of 38 can be reduced to nine out of 19, uh, but eight out of 38 shows me the setup of that wheel. Nine out of 19 kind of throws me off. Okay, so when I do probabilities with fractions, I like to leave them as unreduced fractions. However, the book a lot of times and the homework will reduce it. But if you multiply it out, 81 out of 361. And again, that's why I like percentages. I know 22.4%, I have an idea. Okay, that's about a one-fifth. Okay, it's close enough. But you get that because each is, they're independent of each other. Um, yeah, and so if they're independent, then we can also find their probability by multiplying multiple times. So what would be the probability if getting a baby girl is, is a half percent or half a one out of two chances, right? Equally likely is getting a male. What would be the probability of getting nine, of, of having nine girls in a row? Uh, the way we think of this is it's a one-half times a one-half each girl. It's a, the thing is it's also the same probability of getting a boy, but one-half, one-half, dot, dot, dot. How many times? Nine times. So we could list this as one-half to the ninth power, okay, multiplying. So getting nine girls in a row has a probability, a very low probability, of one out of 512. Okay, two to the ninth power is 512. But you'll have some in the homework of calculating these, give you the probability, probability of it happening so many times. We can do that. Okay, so let's look at a smaller probability or something happening. So in South Florida, uh, there's a probability of five 19th uh, probability that they get hit by a hurricane in any given year. Which, so what would be the probability that a hurricane hits a particular area in South Florida in three consecutive years? 
you um, you raise it to the third power, you, or you multiply it three times, right? So five nineteenths times five nineteenths times five nineteenths. So multiplying it three times in a row, or taking it five nineteenths to the third power. Okay, so it's just a little shortcut. You could do it either way, and you'll get the same answer. Um, which is five divided by nineteen raised to the third power. Just a little faster way, uh, we end up with one hundred and twenty-five over six thousand eight hundred and fifty-nine, taking each of these to the third power, which is a zero point. 0.18 or a 1.8% chance, 2% chance of getting a hurricane three years in a row. Uh, and this is the thing, it's, you know, what's 5 nineteenths? 5 divided by 19. Any given year, there is a 26.3% chance. So that sounds like a high thing, but people ask, well, why do people go back, you know, after getting hit by a hurricane? Because well, there's only a 2% chance that's going to happen every year for three years. Um, now, we know South Florida was just hit by two pretty bad hurricanes back to back, right? There was Haleen and Melvin or, or whatever that was. So they got hit. And I had students from ASU that were on the online program that went through both of them. Um, or, or their area was, was affected either by the flooding or by the winds or by both. Um, sounds like a probability but this is this is how we can do it okay um, and so there's actually a small probability that they would have hurricanes year after year how would we calculate the probability that there is no hurricane so if it's 5 19 so probability of no hurricane in a given year 1 minus 5 19 and again the best way to think of this is 1 is 19 over 19 minus 5 nineteenths, so that's going to be 14 nineteenths, which since the other one's about 26 percent, that would make this about 74 percent, approximately. And I'll use the approximate symbol, okay. So a better chance of not having a hurricane than having a hurricane, but um, again, when you have one, it's, it can be very damaging. So what's the, uh, yeah, about 74% right there. What would be the probability of not having a hurricane in 10 years though? Again, you just take that 14 19 to the 10th power, which not having a hurricane, it's a very low probability. It's about 5% of not having a hurricane in a 10 year period, which makes a 95% chance of having a hurricane sometime in 10 years. Uh, when I was a kid, we lived down in New Orleans and in Florida. Uh, my dad traveled a bit for his work, um, and we got hit by hurricanes in both places. Uh, fortunately, it was a really bad one in the 60s. That's when I was there. Uh, Hurricane Betsy, we knew it was coming, so we flew back to Seattle to sit that one out. Um, and we, the one we were there for, we, we survived pretty good, but our banana tree got picked up and put on somebody else's house. One roof, the house, of, the roof of a house down the street from us got blown off. Fortunately, we didn't. We were renters, but uh, so that's the other thing by hurricanes is, you know, what kind of damage. So and probabilities with dependent events. So let's think what is a dependent event. Uh, it's when one occurs, it affects the other. The, the probability of it happening. So, and probabilities with dependent events. If they're dependent, then we've got this, uh, we're gonna get into something called conditional probability, which we sort of started talking about. You can't just multiply the probability of A times the probability of B. You've got to, if they're dependent, the probabilities will change. If A happens, then B is either more likely or less likely to happen. So we've gotta watch our, our counting. So here's an example. You have a free trip, you want a free trip to Madrid, and you can take two people with you, all expenses paid. 
bad news is you have 10 cousins that appeared out of nowhere and they want to go on the trip with you. You write down each cousin's name on a card, place the card in a hat, and select one name. Then you select a second name without replacing the first card. If there are three of your 10 cousins who speak Spanish, because maybe you don't, uh, and you want to bring someone who does, three out of 10 of your cousins speak Spanish, find the probability of selecting two Spanish-speaking cousins. Okay. So in this sense, the fact that on the first, first chance, what is your probability of selecting a cousin who speaks Spanish? Exactly. There's 10 cousins. There are three of them that speak Spanish. Where is it? Three of them speak Spanish. So there's three out of 10. Now the probability of selecting another Spanish speaking cousin has changed, hasn't it? Because you don't replace that card. You can't select them again. So now how many, Spa how many Spanish speaking cousins do you have that would be in that hat? already selected one there's only two left out of nine this time and nine cousins like because you've selected one of your cousins so it's two ninths so this is how we would do the calculation not three tenths times three tenths because the probability changed okay and again you could uh, I guess I better go back I didn't calculate that so you get six over ninety um, and if you do that, 6 divided by 90, we get 0 0.066 or 67. So about a 6.7% chance, right? The decimal, move the decimal over two places, about 6.7% chance of getting two. Of course, maybe you only need one, but you could calculate that. So far, so good. We're almost done. And then we'll get into the homework. Okay, here's another probability, an and probability. Uh, so we're randomly going to select three people, um, one person at a time. There's five freshmen, two sophomores, four juniors. Find the probability that the first two people selected are freshmen and the third is a junior. Okay, so thinking also. Um, when we do this multiplication. So what is the probability that we select that the first one we select is a freshman? Five freshmen out of how many people? Seven plus four is 11, 11 total. So we've got a five out of 11 chance of getting a freshman on that first choice. Now let's assume we got a freshman uh, so how many freshmen are left? Two. There were five. Now there's four. How many people are left? We chose one, not 11, 10. Okay, so that would be the probability of getting a freshman on the second draw. So again, we got a freshman on the second draw. Now what would be the probability of getting a junior on the third draw? Right, freshmen. So we started with five freshmen. Yeah. We chose one for the first one. So the second time to choose another freshman, there's four, four freshmen left. Okay, so we're counting from the pool of that's left. Now we're gonna do three people, that's the, that's the three slots. Okay, so then there's four out of 10. Now notice the denominator keeps going down by 10 because each time we select one, there's less in the group. So there's only going to be nine people to select from. How many juniors are there? There are still four juniors left because we haven't chosen any of the, the first two. We, we chose two, two freshmen to start with. So this would be four out of nine. Okay, see how you count it. Now, one of the questions I always have, well, what if I don't get a freshman on the first two? Well, then that didn't happen. So that's why in counting probabilities, you're counting what's the number of ways to get something to happen, okay? If we don't get a freshman, then we're done. It didn't happen, okay? So this is getting a freshman, a freshman, and then a junior, okay? And we would multiply these. So 
conditional probabilities are that the probabilities are changing each time something happens. Okay, and so we can multiply this. It's going to give us 5 times 4 times 4. 80, 11 times 10 times 9, 990. And if you divide those two, the probability of that happening is about 8%. 0.0800. 0 .08, even when you round it, I guess an 8.1% chance. So the last concept we're going to deal with is, is sort of what we're dealing here. This is condition. This is what's called conditional probability. So it's probability of, of something happening given that something else has already happened. So we know something. So that's what we were doing. We were assuming, hey, we already, we already picked a freshman. So now what's the probability of getting a second freshman? So these are conditional probabilities. Um, and so we're going to calculate things differently knowing something happened. So here's an example. A letter is randomly selected from the letters of the English alphabet. How many letters are there in the English alphabet? A, B, C, D, E, 26. OK, total. Uh, find the probability of selecting a vowel. How many vowels are there in the English language? I think there's five. A, E, I, O, U, five vowels. Uh, but we're given something, not just in general. If this was the end of the question, we'd say, well, that's 5 out of 26, right? But with conditional probability, we are given that something already occurred, given that the outcome is a letter that precedes H. So how many letters are before H? Got to count A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Before H, 7. H doesn't count because it's got to be before H. So there's seven letters. How many of those seven letters are vowels? A and E, there's only two vowels. So the, prob the conditional probability becomes two out of seven. So the probability that we got a vowel given that we are before H, let's do it that way, is two sevenths. Okay. And again, the, the way we're going to do this is you just have to count, you're counting something different. That, that condition is telling you the pool of, of possibilities has changed. Okay. You've got evidence or you've got information that it's not the whole thing happening, it's just this. So, what's the probability Otani got a home run given that he got a hit? is different than just the probability he got a home run and he got up to play. Because sometimes he strikes out, sometimes he doesn't get a hit, right? Um, sometimes he gets walked, sometimes intentionally because he gets so many home runs. But so the probability that he got a home run given that he got a hit, that's going to be a different probability than just the probability he went up to bat and got a home run. Okay, so there's a condition there. Um, so that's the same thing here. So if we've got data, and here's uh, women who are going through um, and they're getting screened for, for breast cancer. Some have breast cancer, some don't have breast cancer. And again, sometimes you have to go for a second screening and sometimes um, they find out later that they actually did or something, but these are, this is some data. So what we can do is find the probability that a woman in this age range has a positive mammogram. So that means the mammogram is saying that you probably got cancer given that she does not have breast cancer. Okay. So later on, I guess they find out that she really didn't. So, but the condition is they got a positive mammogram. Well, how many uh, women had positive mammograms? Exactly. So that's the condition. It's 7,000. That's the total that we're dealing with because that's the given. Right, positive mammogram. So the problem, uh, I guess, the number of positive mammograms. It's 
in the denominator 7,664. How many of those, right, does not have cancer? So we're down here. It's not, it's not the 99. We're given that this is what has happened. They had a positive mammogram, 6,944. So, probability that she had a positive mammogram given that she, oh wait, did I do that backwards? I did, I did. Given that she does not have, so the given is the total that she's coming from. So sometimes making a mistake is helpful. I did this backwards. What is the given? She does not have breast cancer. So how many people do not have breast cancer? That's the number we want to use for our total. That's the given, okay? So one of the things you've seen here is when you read these questions in the English, what you face first is not really what your, is not the total. You want that, she has a positive mammogram, but the given is the total. So out of 9,000, or 99,200, no breast cancer, how many got a positive mammogram? The top is the same, 6,944, but she doesn't have it. Um, so let's calculate that percentage, 6,944 divided by 99,200. It's about a 7% probability. So 7% of the women who don't have breast cancer still get a positive mammogram. What does that mean? They think they may have cancer and they have to go for a second procedure to maybe rule it out or you know, go forward. So this is called a false positive, right? Of course, you could also calculate the false negatives. So that's those who have breast cancer but get a negative. That's a little bit more serious. They think they're safe, but they actually have the breast cancer growing. So what's the probability of a false negative? Again, based on these numbers, that would be 80 out of 800, which is eight out of eight, or eight out of 80. a 10%. So 10% of those women, there's a 10% chance of getting a false negative, which means you think you're safe, but you've actually got the cancer growing in you. So um, those are the more serious ones. The 7% you're going to maybe be stressed out because you think you might have cancer, but you'll go get a second test. Um, oftentimes those who have a negative mammogram may not get that second test. Okay. So does uh, conditional probability make sense? Again, it's just counting. It's just a division problem, but you've got to make sure you're counting the right things. And this is where it's a little tricky. You have to look to the second thing. It's the given that tells you which group you're in. Okay, and that's the last slide. So we're going to stop there. And it's okay. Would you like to go into the quiz? Okay, so let's work through. I think I got it down. There's only four quiz problems. Um, so chapter eight and nine. And what I've done, if hopefully, um, is I've combined them. So this will come over as 30 points when you do the quiz, 30 points when you do the homework. The same thing, you just need to get 70% of the total points. Um, what's 70% of 30? 30 times 0.7, uh, 21 points. So if you get 21 out of 30, uh, you'll have it full. So I'm gonna reset. Let's go to the teacher preview. And let's make this a little bit larger. Okay, so this is uh, just strict probability. We've got a spinner here, so this 
kind of things you'll see in the homework. Uh, what's the probability of getting greater than 12 when we spin on here? How many numbers on this wheel are greater than 12? Zero. Okay. How many numbers are on the wheel? 12. So what's 0 divided by 12? 0%, zero right? So we can just enter the 0. Uh, if it was something else, we'd enter in the, the fraction. I don't know if you all got that, but... Um, you'll have something along those. Um, question two is about drawing balls or mar colored balls out of a bag. A uh, ball is drawn randomly from our jar that contain nine red, eight white, and seven yellow. Find the probability of the given event. So what would be the probability that a red ball is drawn? So what do we need? Well, we know that there's nine red balls. How many total are there. The total is 9 plus 8 plus 7, which is 26. For, for the quarters you're going to have to do, I have to reduce that, so I don't have to like, reduce it all the way to like, the um, to Yeah, it's going to want you to reduce it, so let's, um, let's kind of see how we would do that. So that's 9 out of 26. Um, so what we're looking, is there a number that divides into both of them? Uh, so 9 is divisible by 3, but 26 is not divisible by 3, so that one doesn't get reduced. And that's why I like uh, being able to use a, um, a percentage, because then you don't have to worry about reducing a fraction. Um, the other thing I can show you, I've, I've seen uh, one of the students that does this, is actually if you come in here, and Google will do this now, like on a Google search, if you do 9, let's do 9 divided by 27, which can be reduced. You can just type in 9 divided by 27, um, and then it tells you it's 0.333, or you could say, give me the simplified. Um, it'll tell you it simplifies to one third. It reduces. There's calculators that will do it. If you put it in the calculator, it'll give it to you as a fraction. Uh, but that's just one thing you'll need to do. Make sure you can reduce it. The ball drawn is not red. Uh, so if we know, where did my, oh, there it is. Um, Again, you could do this two ways. You could do it the hard way or you could do it the easy way. You could say, well, if it's not red, that means it's white or blue, or, or yellow, sorry. So there's 8 plus 7. That's 15 out of 26. Notice I could do it with just counting. Or you could say, well, the probability of getting a red is 926. So the probability of not getting a red is 1 minus 926, which is... 26 over 26 minus 9 over 26. 26 minus 9 is 15. Okay, so both ways. You could count all of them, um, white or yellow, or you can take one minus. Either way, um, it's going to be 15 out of 26. And I can click here, which they come up with 5, 8. So wait, does 3 go into 26? Did I count this right? 9, it's 15. Oh, it's 24. It's not 26. How many of you caught that and didn't tell me? No. Okay, so that's out of 24. So that's why we put it in here. So 924, so that's why it was asking you to reduce. Um, and again, what I'll show you is 924s. 
you can just do a Google search if you wanted to um, as a simplified fraction. AI gives it to you, or maybe it doesn't. Calculator does. Three goes into both of these, though. Three goes into nine three times. Three goes into 24 eight times. So that's why they're getting the three eights there. Um, and 15 out of 24. Three goes into 15 five times. Three goes into 24 eight times. So that's why they're getting the five eights. Okay, finally, what is the probability that a green ball is drawn? Zero. There is no green ball, so you can't you can't draw one if you don't have one. So. No, uh, you because it's it's so you either you do it one of two ways. So the, this one can either be one minus getting a red ball, which would be three eighths reduced, or, so eight eighths minus three eighths is five eighths. Um, or you could add the white and the yellow together, which is 15, out of the total number, which is 24 and then reduce it. Okay. So what they're favoring is doing subtracting, taking the, the red balls, probability getting a red ball, subtracting it from one. So whenever you have the not probability, you can do it that way. But it's not a conditional. Okay, it's not that we know something happened. We still, we're dealing with uh, 24 total balls, not 26. Um, let me go from there. Okay. And again, we'll help you with either of these. We've got three, and then we've got four, um, and then just the homework. So giving a test to a group of students, the grades and gender are summarized below. So male and female, A, B, C, totals. If one student has chosen at random, determine the following probabilities. Write your answers as reduced fractions again. So what's the probability the student was male? So how many male students are there? 44. 44 out of a total of 94. I'm not going to go th through reduce it, but that, again, that would give us our answer. What was the probability that the student was female? 50 out of 94. And again, two goes into both of these, so you can kind of keep dividing out the common factor until you get it reduced. A uh, student was male and got and got an A. So the student was male and got an A. So there's 10 males that received an A out of total of 94. So remember, this is not a conditional. It's still number of males who got an A divided by the total. Student was female and got a B. Got a B and a female is 19 students out of 94. And finally, a student got a C. So that's all, no gender or anything. So that's 27 out of 94. Okay, so you kind of see how we're getting the numbers from. Okay, no conditional there. 
And finally, oh, actually, there's another one after that. Okay. A six sided die is rolled twice. Let E be the event. The first roll is a five. And F the event, the second roll is a five. Are the events E and F independent? So that's just a yes or no. Does rolling a five the first time change the probability of rolling the five the second time? Okay, so it is independent. So that would be a yes. Find the probability of showing a five on both rolls. So what's the probability of getting a five the first time? One sixth. Probability of getting a five the second is still one sixth. So that's going to be one out of 36 probability of rolling a five uh, with one die right in a row. Okay. And this last one, I'm going to ask a lot of questions. This one will involve the conditional. So find the probability that a randomly cho chosen person has a red car. So how many people have red cars? 318 out of how many people? 586. Has a speeding ticket. So speeding tickets, total speeding tickets is 273 out of 586. Now here we go. It's the given. Has a speeding ticket given they have a red car? So how many people have a red car? That's in the denominator. 318. How many of those 318 people got a speeding ticket? 167. So you see, uh, yes, um, which is nice so that you don't have to worry about, um, I think you don't have to worry about reducing the fraction. So if you take 167 divided by 318, you'll get the decimal equivalent. Okay. Um, has a red car given that they have a speeding ticket. So remember the given is where we're choosing from. So they're given that they have a speeding ticket. Let me get erase all of this stuff. So we know they have a speeding ticket. And what's the probability that they have a red car? So that's 167 out of 273. Notice that's different than that they got a speeding ticket given that they got a red car. The probabilities are going to be different. Okay, so, but you've got to do that conditional. Whatever the given is, we know that happened. So that's our 100%. Has a red car and got a speeding ticket. So notice this is going to be different. This is not a conditional. has a red car and got a speeding ticket. Has a red car, got a speeding ticket. That's 167, but how many is that out of? There was no conditional, it's out of the total number, 586. Okay. So 167 out of 586. Has a red car or got a speeding ticket. So it has a red car, 318, got, or got a speeding ticket, so we want to take 318 plus 273, but what did we do? We counted those who have a red car and a speeding ticket, we counted those twice. <coughs> So we'd want to subtract off the 167. And this is out of the total 586. Okay. 
So that's that last one where we've, we've got an intersection. We have to subtract off the intersection. Okay. Write them all in decimal form, round to the nearest uh, thousandth, so three decimal places. And I think the table randomizes a bit, so you may have slightly different numbers. Maybe you have the same ones. Um, but that's how you do those calculations. Okay. <coughs> so work through this uh, quiz. You get those. Work through the homework. You'll get that experience. And then we'll have Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, as a work day, tutor day, to get any help uh, on either this or the... Um, test corrections, if you want help with your projects, if, you're do, if you choose to do a project, uh, that'd be great. And then next Monday, we will jump into chapter 10. The last one? Right. So red car or speeding ticket, again, kind of the ways we can do it. Um, speeding ticket, the total with speeding tickets are here, the 273. Total with red cars are here, but there's an intersection right here, 167. And notice in counting it, we've counted it twice. And so we take the 318 plus the 273, but we subtract off the 167 because that got counted twice. And that's out of the total of 586. So you end up with 318 plus 273 minus 167. That's still 424 out of 586. And one way, you know, you made a mistake. If you don't subtract this off, you get a number bigger than 100%. Um, but now we're, we're going to get the more accurate number, 424 divided by 586. So I got 0.724 rounded to three decimal places. It was a, it was a three that got rounded up to a four. So 72%. 0.724 rounded to three decimal places. Again, it's um, and if you're getting it wrong, it's probably you're, you're adding the wrong things or maybe you forgot to subtract or something. But that's, as you go through these, it'll help you determine. Um, one last question that's not on the quiz. When you're rolling two die, is each of the numbers, each of the sums that you could draw, is, are they all equally likely? So is it is, is a, as likely to roll a 7 as it is to roll a, a 5? If you have two die. You have two. How many ways can you roll a 7? Well, you can get a 3 and a 4. Okay. A green 3 and a red 4. Five and two. But you can also get a green four and a red three, right? So there's those are two ways. There's a five and a two and a two and a five. Six and a one, a one and a six. So there's actually six different ways to get a seven. And what you think is when you're rolling two dice, there's, you're going to get actually 36 different outcomes. How many ways are there to roll a two? Snake eyes one way, one out of 36 ways. There's only one way. A red one and a green one. A green one and a red one. There's only one way to roll a two. But there's six ways to roll a seven. So you start seeing the game of craps. It's not simple. It's not, e not all of the numbers are equally likely. You are much more likely to roll a seven than any other number. Uh, rolling a 12 is not very likely. It's one out of 36. Um, so those are the types of, uh, we don't get into that in this class, but in another probability class you might see that. So um, anyway, I wanted you to be able to touch probability as well as you were doing it. So uh, there might be some questions if you want to use these. 
If not, you can just leave them at your seats because the next class when they come in, they'll need these too. Yes, sir. Number three. Number three. Questions on any of those? I got three of them. There was the, the three last ones. Three last ones. Okay. Student was male and got an A. Let me see. Male and got an A. Was male and got an A. So that should be 10 out of the total of 94. Do you have the same numbers in your table as I do? No, it's uh, 9 and 75. 9 and 75. Um, nine and seventy. Oh, it's probably just not reduced because if did you put in nine seventy fifths? Because three actually can go into both of these. Yeah. Okay, three can go into nine. Three times three goes into seventy five twenty five times. Because twenty five times three is seventy five, so it should be three twenty fifths. So it's just, that's what I mean, is you had the right answer, it just wasn't in their right form, so it marks it wrong. Um, that's why I like to use decimals. Or Can you go back to the last part on your question set? Or five? Five, sure. has a red car and got a speeding ticket. Since it's an and, that's an intersection, remember? So actually, I, did, I just found the intersection. They got a red car, got a speeding, that's 167. The thing is, since it's not conditioned on anything, it's out of the total of 586. So we, yeah, we didn't actually add or do anything. We just, we came here. It's, it's 88 out of five. Right. So it's just, yeah, so that with the table, you just look up that intersection part and divide it by the total. Thank you.